Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today Glove was just released. And what is Glove? Well, it is a technology or a middleware that enables you to run OpenGL ES2 code uh, directly on Vulkan. So you could take advantage of Vulkan drivers, but um, actually have your OpenGL2 code running. So let's jump in a little bit to the news announcements. This comes via LPGPU2, uh, which is the low... Low Power Parallel Computing on GPU-2 uh, EU-funded research project of which Think Silicon is a member. And they just released this open source middleware enables Android, Linux, and Windows operating system to seamlessly run OpenGL ES on supported hardware by translating at runtime OpenGL ES API calls to Vulkan API commands for that platform. So essentially what that means is um, it's mapping your GPU calls directly from GLES over to Vulkan. So you don't really need to do anything to make your code work with this. You basically just need to create OpenGL ES compatible code, ES2 compatible code, and it should just run on Vulkan drivers. Now, who's the target audience for this? Uh, I'm not 100% certain, to be honest. This one is probably more towards game engine makers. So what you can see is this technology could be implemented by uh, the Godot game engine, for example, which is uh, in the progress of porting their GLES2 um, renderer to Godot 3.1. Uh, and then that would enable that code to run directly using Vulkan drivers. Now, one of those things is Vulkan is a simplified system. So the drivers in theory should be simpler to write. It's lower level to the hardware. Um, so it, it gives the, the hardware manufacturers a bit more flexibility and s hopefully ease in implementing their drivers. So the drivers should be more stable than the OpenGL drivers, which have to support a broad variety of hardware and um, have more difficulty adding new features and functionality. At least that's my take on this. Um, it's kind of a, a weird niche project. Now, again, you will note that it runs currently on Android, Windows, and Linux. Uh, so Mac OS people are out in the, the dust, but frankly, Mac OS and OpenGL haven't exactly been playing uh, together great lately. Although I wonder if you could actually run Glove over um, Metal via Molten VK. It'd be interesting to see if that is actually a path you can take. So if you're interested, this is actually fairly early on. They're, they've tested it with uh, Mesa Vulkan Intel drivers and OpenGL ES2 that is on Intel Ivy Bridge, uh, Intel HD 5300 Skylake integrated GPU, and on an N uh, NVIDIA GeForce 940M. Now you'll notice success, success, and ongoing. So I'm gonna take ongoing as not quite successful yet. That's a, yeah, we'll go with that one. Anyways, if you're interested in learning more about how, um, how Glove works, uh, they've got a, a more in-depth design document on their site that goes through the process in detail. Um, be interested to hear from you where you can see uses of this. Do you have a bunch of GL code that you want to somehow run on Vulkan? Or is this more aimed at, you know, unifying and simplifying on the back end the requirement to, you know, I guess this would remove the need for a GLES driver. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of struggling a bit to see the real world applications for this guy. So if you've got them, let me know down below. And I do know immediately for example, Godot could use this. I know that's one relevant user, but I can't think of too many others outside of game engine makers themselves. But if you got a project that could take advantage of this, if so, do let me know. Um, it's available in code form. It's also got a number of tests available. And that's about it. Now, there's one thing I do want to mention before moving on, though, is this acronym needs a little bit of work because I Glove sounds really cool, but GL over Vulcan gives me glove with no E. So that E is just being made up. Uh, let's just throw another word at the end there. So GL over Vulcan experimental. Yeah, that'll work. Then glove actually makes sense. But as it stands now, that ain't the best acronym I've ever seen. But that really doesn't matter. Cool release from Think Silicon. Nice to see this is uh, open source and available for everybody. I believe it is, yeah, it's under the LGP LV3 license. Um, which actually kind of completely makes sense for this kind of work. It's interesting to say, which is provided as free software with an unlimited use for educational and research purposes, but you should actually be able to use an LGPL license code, you know, in, in a commercial project as well. So I don't know uh, what the stipulation is there or if that's something specific to V3, but that they're implicitly not saying 
or explicitly not saying that it's also available for commercial use is a little worrying. I'm not sure if there's an issue there, but I also don't think that this is even close to ready for commercial use. It's still, you know, only been tested under a very small subset of devices. But it is an interesting technology, just not 100% sure what the actual use cases are of this so if you got an idea do let me know in the comments down below all right news filled day so uh yeah talk to you all later goodbye